Hi friends, if you've been with me for a while now, you know we've been on quite the journey together. I mean, I remember videos from back in the day when I was first learning the basics of how to code, to getting my first software developer job, to working at IBM as a software developer, leading a team of developers, working at small, you get the point. You've been with me for a lot of the journey. One thing though, that for me looking back on this journey would have not made this possible, this journey, or even for your own journey sitting here watching this, is not having the ability to learn. Now, let me clarify that. Not just having the ability to learn. What I mean by that is identifying what to learn, but even more importantly, identifying what not to learn. Learning as you get older is essential, especially if you are looking to grow your salary, your career, your title, everything that comes with it. Especially nowadays when tech is moving faster than ever before. But here's the reality and the biggest challenge. With learning as we grow and you know get older, it feels like older every single day, well we are, one of the challenges is time. I mean, when you think about learning and wherever you are at in life, you start to have a family, you start to have more responsibilities. And with that, it becomes more challenging to learn new things. That is why it is more important than ever to be able to identify what to learn and what not to learn. What is not worth your time? Tech is moving really quickly. And with that comes technologies that are going to be outdated very quickly. And we are going to have a little fun video today where we are going to go through the top five technologies I would not learn in 2024 or 2025, going into 2025. And the reason I wouldn't learn these is because it wouldn't benefit my career, my salary, my skill set, anything like that. Now, obviously, this is just my take. It's personal. And some of these technologies, they might still be needed in very niche areas. But overall, if you are looking to learn new things, these might not, well, I'm just gonna say it. They probably aren't the technologies you should be focused on. All right. Let's get into it. Actually, before we do, I'll insert a photo here. I am back in San Diego. I've been doing a little bit of traveling this summer and I'm looking over the water right now with some jet skis, boats. It's so beautiful here. If you've been to San Diego, let me know in the comments or if you live here, let me know. Maybe I should come back and do a meetup. That'd be really fun. All right, back to tech. Now, the first one I'm going to cover is one that I think might be a little controversial, but that's okay, because I'm sharing what I wouldn't learn. And I'm curious to hear if you disagree with this, why you disagree, but all right, let's just get into it. The first one I would not learn is AngularJS. Now, why wouldn't I learn it? Well, let's take a step back. Why was Angular.js created? It was created back in 2010 by Google. And at the time it became very popular because it offered a new way to spin up websites really faster than what felt like ever before. There was great documentation on it, great support on it. I mean, it was back, it was created by Google. So here are some things that AngularJS introduced. It introduced two-way data binding, which automatically synchronized data between the model and the view. So this is really exciting to developers to see. And it also integrated dependency injection, which really made it easier to manage and test application components. So at the end of the day, even if you are someone who isn't familiar with AngularJS, it was a really big moment for developers to build faster, more efficiently, introducing two-way data binding. It was really exciting. So why isn't it as popular now? Or what happened for the decline? Well, for one, I think the first issue was Google released uh, Angular 2, which was not compatible with the first one, which I think is so strange that they would do that. That obviously gave developers a lot of grief, especially when it came to maintaining. I mean, everything had to be relearned. Not to mention at that time, newer frameworks or libraries started coming onto the scene, especially React and then Vue. I mean, there were so many to choose from. So if your framework was not pristine or easy to adapt or implement, or even maintain in this case, oftentimes it would fall to the side. It also had limited mobile development support, which was a headache once again. Now, here's the real catch as to why I wouldn't learn AngularJS in 2024 and beyond. Google stopped supporting AngularJS back in 2022. So if you are learning this, you're not going to have any updated support, which really equates to companies are not going to be looking to start picking AngularJS up. Your role, if you are learning something like that, would be more for maintenance. So it's definitely not something that will help grow your career per se, or something you really should pursue. Once again, this is just my opinion. People get very heated on these topics, but if you disagree, let me know in the comments as to why. Coming at number two on the list is COBOL. And listen, before you come at me for this one, I know there are very high paying jobs 
for COBOL developers. No one's saying that. Why are they high, pay high paying? Because there's very few COBOL developers. This is something if you're looking to get very niche, very specific, and maybe you know a company that's hiring for these developers, then go and learn it. But if you are looking to upskill, level your, your income, grow your income, level up your career, would I learn COBOL? Absolutely not unless there was a very specific reason to. But let's take a step back. Why was COBOL popular? So COBOL was actually popular back in around, or it was created around 1959. And at the time it became very popular because it was one of the first programming languages that read almost like English, which made it for easier for non-technical people to understand, at least on a high level anyway. And I mean, even for developers, it was at the time easier to get acquainted with. And what also made COBOL really special is it can handle large amounts of data really well, which made it really great for batch processing. Why isn't it growing now? Where's COBOL? Well, for one, modern programming languages, especially object-oriented programming, came onto the scene and in turn really took over from COBOL. I mean, for myself, I've never learned COBOL, but I've seen its syntax compared to say JavaScript uh, or even Python and I think I just, why would I learn that when I can learn something that's so much more user friendly? And it also has difficulty integrating into modern databases and also with mobile uh, sites as well. But it's important to note, as I mentioned at the beginning, talking about COBOL, it is not dead. A lot of government agencies still use it, so it's just more niche. If you are a COBOL developer, I think that's really cool. But I'm curious to hear, if you are a COBOL developer, but you weren't, if that makes sense, would you suggest for people to pick it up? Leave in the comments. All right, coming in at number three is Backbone.js. And I'm curious to hear how many of you who are watching this have used Backbone.js before. This is really interesting. Here's a bit of history on it. It was released back in 2010 and was one of the first popular toolkits for organizing the JavaScript code on a website. And you can kind of think of it as, you know, I like to equate things back to real world examples. Think of it as an early attempt at creating a filing system for the chaotic desk of web development. We were trying to make things a bit more organized with Backbone.js. So here's why it was so popular at the time. It helps structure web applications, like providing a basic set of shelves and drawers for a messy room. It also was lightweight and didn't try and do everything, which was pretty refreshing and it worked well with servers, which really made it easier for websites to send and receive data. So for more of a technical explanation, back, back, it's hard to say, Backbone.js is unopinionated, allowing for developers to structure their applications as they see fit. So it sounds pretty cool. Why wouldn't it be as popular now as it was back when it was released in 2010? Well, for one, it was lack of two-way data binding, and this became a standard for newer frameworks. Also, there was no built-in component system, which would require additional libraries or custom solutions, and manual DOM manipulation was required, which made everything feel more error-prone. Now, Backbone.js is the last time it was updated, actually, let me quickly search, what was the last time Backbone.js was updated? I think it was in 2021, let me double check one. So right now, this is not when it was updated, but right now Backbone is used by 1% of all the websites whose JavaScript library we know. That's pretty large, that's 0.8% of all websites. So it's definitely not dead by any means when you think of how many websites exist out there. Now let's keep on going. Well, it says it's still actively being maintained. There's mixed reviews on it. There's a lot of this that comes up, which is, I don't know, can you see this? I'll screenshot, oh yeah, there you go. It says, is a lot of search queries, you know how Google does the recommendations of, is Backbone.js dead or not? And so no, it's not dead, but as you can see by the numbers and the statistics, it's not something that I personally would choose to spend my free time learning. Now, if I worked at a company where they were using it, well, I mean, they're paying me to learn it, so of course I would. It's not something negative to learn, I just wouldn't go out and source it and learn on my own time. And the fourth thing I would not learn in 2024, going into 25, is SVN. Now this is really cool actually though, just understanding the history of this technology and how the history of technology as to how it evolves and what we're using today and understanding the evolution of it is really interesting and will make you a better technologist, better developer. I think it's so key too. So here's what SVN is. It stands for subversion. I've never used SVN before. I think it was a little bit before my time. You can kind of think of it though as it's very similar, uh, well, not totally, but you can think of it as Git kind of took over and that's why we don't use SVN anymore. It was released back in 2000 and it really helped developers similar to Git tr keep track of changes to their code and work together on the same project. So SVN uses a centralized repository model where all version controlled files are stored on a central server. 
and similar to Git, it allowed for branching or allows for branching, tagging, and uh, collaboration with other team members. So it brings up an interesting question. SVN was released back in 2000. Why isn't it still widely used such as Git? What made Git take over? Well, here is kind of the technical downfall of SVN, or I should say why it's not as popular now, because it still is used. Git was essentially like SVN, but with superpowers. Git allowed developers to work offline more easily and to also juggle multiple versions of a project more efficiently. It really was SVM, SVN, but enhanced. Not to mention websites like GitHub, GitLab made using Git so much more user-friendly. Everything, really what happened was everything went to, for developers, for us, went to being, you know, more user-friendly, which makes me really interested to see what will happen in another 10 years, because we like user-friendly things. We like friendly interfaces for these technologies. Where are we gonna be at in another 10 years from now? But that's what really happened. Websites came along, such as I mentioned, as GitHub or GitLab, making using Git so much more user-friendly. It just advanced so much quicker. As a side note, here's something really interesting that you can learn today. What exactly is the difference then between SVN and Git? The key difference is that SVN, as we mentioned, is centralized. So it's a centralized version control system, whereas Git is a distributed control version control system. And this is a huge fundamental difference which leads to many other distinctions from that as to how they are run. All right, those are the four technologies I will not be spending my time learning in 2024, going into 2025. I think the next video we need to do are the four to five technologies that I have my eye on, courses I'm looking to take for 2025. That being said, I'm curious to hear what are some other technologies that you think are not worth learning in this year or moving forward? It doesn't have to be looked at as a negative. What it needs to be looked at as is things are evolving quickly and we need to have these conversations as much as we have the conversations what to focus on. I think in my opinion, it's, it's honestly equally if not more important to have these conversations because it's taking a step back through time, looking at history, where things began and understanding as to why they didn't work out. I remember it was, when I was at IBM, it was a senior developer. I think he was a solutions architect actually. And I, I really wanted to become a solutions architect at the time. And I remember him saying to me, I was using Angular and he said to me, but why are you using Angular? This is for a client project we we're working on. I said, well, I don't know, it's great. Like, and I listed a few points as to why it's great. And he's like, yeah, but why did we choose Angular over React or Vue? Like, what, what is it that the requirements needed Angular for this project? And I couldn't answer it initially. And it was, and he knew he, that's why he was asking this question because so many developers just pick the latest and greatest without understanding really the reasoning behind why a company or why they are picking a technology to learn. And that's really important to have that understanding if you wanna become a solutions architect or really take your career to the next level by actually understanding the technology. It's one thing to build with it, it's a whole other thing to understand it. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. They're really fun to make. Hit that subscribe button for more tech coding, AI, tech news, oh, everything tech. You know the drill. All right, I love you all and I'll see you soon. Leave in the comments any questions, suggestions you have. I will do my best to answer every single one of them.